Thanks for joining me. Today I wanted to do a video showing you guys how I make this uh, this pouch. This one right here. Right here. This one. Anyways, um, pretty basic design. Uh, for lack of better terms or a better name, I call this the wet pouch. Uh, simply because primarily I use it for stowing away fishing gear or anything that might be partially wet. So it allows the opportunity for it to kind of dry out a little bit. Um, you can utilize it for anything. You can change the materials up. You can make a great like everyday carrier EDC pouch. Um, you can change up the materials, Velcro, patches, whatever you see fit. Very basic design, super simple. So it's an awesome project for a beginner out there if they would choose to give it a run. Um, but anyways, let's get at it. Here I'm using a mesh from Sailrite. It's called Pfeiffer Text. It's a vinyl mesh, so it tends to work a little bit better. You'll see a lot of the cloth style mesh in packs and backpacks and things like that. I tend to not like that because when you put stuff in it and pull it out, it kind of snags on it and hangs it up versus this vinyl that does not do that. Your zipper is going to go along your 7.5 inch side of material. Cut it at 8.5 inches, slightly oversized, and you'll trim that down later. Piece of webbing, 3 quarter inches by 2.5 inches long. Um, 1 inch grain ribbon or binding material, anything you have that you want to use for binding is fine. That goes along the 7.5 inch side as well, so cut that oversized about 8.5 inches. Here I'm using the Hyperstick basing tape from Wawak. This stuff is superior to anything else I've ever tried. Highly recommend it. I didn't show this step in the video, but you can see on this binding tape that there's a center line marked on it. I do that for ease of placement when I go ahead and place the material down onto the binding tape to try to keep it even as possible so you're equivalent on both sides. I do have a 335 binding machine set up strictly for binding. Uh, however, I have it set up at this current time for three-quarter binding where I'm using inch for this, so it really didn't make sense to reset up the machine to run these small straight pieces through. If I were doing a big run, I would definitely set the machine up and, and do that. It would make it uh, a whole lot faster of a project for sure. Here we're placing our material down onto our zipper tape. You want the zipper tape slider running from left to right. Uh, yeah, I tape this down as well. You could use clips, binding clips, just uh, as well. But I tend to like to use the, the tape because I think it holds it more securely and ultimately gives a, a cleaner end result.
And here we're going to stitch our uh, piece onto our zipper tape. Right here I'm using my Conso 7360 uh, machine to do this. This is a just a just a standard industrial lock stitch machine. It's non-walking foot. Um, typically in the past I've used a walking foot machine for any projects like this. However, this machine is kind of new to me and it works actually really well. So the walking foot isn't completely necessary for a project like this. Here we cut off all the excess so we can get everything lined up properly. I went ahead and burned the edges to keep any anything from fraying. Here you want to line up everything and get your zipper slider installed. Um, try to keep this as even as possible. Sometimes it's a little tough. As you can see here in the video, I had mine off a little bit. I had to go back in off camera and uh, get that straightened out so I can get it all sewed up straight, keep everything from being uneven. So after you get that installed, you want to flip this inside out so you can go ahead and stitch it all together and secure the ends. I'm getting everything squared up here so I can go ahead and secure the ends and make this thing turn into an actual pouch. Uh, so many different ways of doing zippers and pouches and bags and things like that. So I tend to like to place the zipper on the side versus the top. Um, when it's on the top, I see that it has a lot of bulk in the seams and kind of makes it uh, tight there in the corners. Um, that's why I do it this way. That piece of webbing that you cut earlier, um, you need to place that on the side right below the zipper facing inward. And go ahead and clip that in place so it doesn't move around on you. Make sure it is facing inward so when you flip the pouch right side out, um, it will be on the correct side. Uh, here's where I place my, my logo tag as well. Using a quarter inch seam allowance, go ahead and stitch up the ends. Uh, be certain to uh, back tack over any of the stress points like the zipper ends as well as the webbing. Here you want to 
want to um, kind of miter the corners. Um, when you do that, it actually allows for the flipping of the, the pouch to be a little bit easier. Also, trim down your seam allowance a little bit. Don't get excessive on this because it seems like if it makes it too thin on the seam allowance when you flip, it doesn't want to lay flat. So leave, leave a little bit there, but you don't need a, a whole bunch of excess. Here's the uh, wrestling match of flipping the pouch inside out. Uh, it's not too bad, but some bags can be pretty uh, pretty rough to get flipped. Um, take the corners and push those out the best you can. Uh, one tip I have here for I didn't utilize it in this video, but a knitting needle that's not so uh, sharp and pointy, like a blunt end knitting needle, works awesome for, for pushing out corners of pouches and bags and things like that without fear of puncturing through the material. Uh, lay the seams down as best you can so this will lay flat. Um, of course with use this will actually get a little bit better and make those uh, seams kind of set in. But anyways, here's a pouch. Um, it's done. Utilize it for what you want. Uh, some other alternatives for this pouch would be like Cordura or any other outdoor material like that. Um, I have used in the past. And you can actually even line it if you want. This step where you add the uh, binding on, just um, bind your lining material and your outside material at the same time and utilize just the same steps and you should have a end result with a line pouch. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Appreciate you watching. Life's not infinite, it's the only chance we get, so why are we waiting, why are we waiting, will it click, looking for the next new fix, is this the new kind of sick, why are we waiting, why are we waiting,